page 135 lesson 11 ode to a nightingale by john keats my heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains my senses as though of hemlock i had drunk or emptied some dull opiate to the drains one minute past and lethwards had sunk tis not through envy of thy happy lot but being too happy in thine happiness that thou light-winged dryad of the trees in some melodious plot of beechen green and shadows numberless singest of summer in full-throated ease leith in ancient greek mythology an imaginary river whose water when drunk was thought to make the dead forget their life on earth dryad in stories a female spirit that lives in a tree page 136 oh for a draught of vintage that had been cooled a long age in the deep delved earth tasting of flora and the country green dance and provincial song and sunburnt mirth oh for a beaker full of the warm south full of the true the blushful hippocrene with beaded bubbles winking at the brim and purple stained mouth that i might drink and leave the world unseen and with the fade away into the forest dim fade far away dissolve and quite forget what though among the leaves hast never known the weariness the fever and the fret here where men sit and hear each other groan where palsy shakes a few sad last grey hairs where youth grows pale and spectre thin and dies where but to think is to be full of sorrow and leaden eyed despairs where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes or new love pine at them beyond tomorrow provencal pronounced provencal of the district of province in france known for its bards and its great vines hippocrene a fountain in mount helicon associated with poetry in the poem it refers to the wine that inspires poetic ability page number 137 thou wast not born for death immortal bird no hungry generations tread thee down the voice i hear this passing night was heard in ancient days by emperor and clown perhaps the self same song that found a path through the sad heart of ruth when sick for home she stood in tears amid the alien corn the same that oft times hath charmed magic casements opening on the foam of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn forlorn the very word is like a bell to toll me back from thee to my soul self adieu the fancy cannot cheat so well as she is feigned to do deceiving elf adieu adieu thy plaintive anthem fades past the near meadows over the still stream up the hillside and now tis buried deep in the next valley glades was it a vision or a waking dream fled is that music do i wake or sleep ruth a woman in the bible who left her own people to live with her mother-in-law naomi after the death of her husband marries boaz 
and is the ancestor of King David. About the poet, John Keats, who lived between 1795 to 1821, was one of the greatest of the younger generation of English Romantic poets. He started his career as an apprentice to a surgeon. Page 138 but soon gave it up for poetry. His poetic career lasted for only four years. But during this short span, he evolved from an ordinary poet to an exceptionally mature poetic force. His poetry celebrates beauty, which he considered the ultimate truth. It is portrayed in extremely senseless images that has been created through beautiful verbal pictures. The image of the nightingale's bower in the poem is an apt illustration of the poet's craft in the respect. Look for these words and guess their meanings from the context. Hemlock, earth, beech and green, plaintive anthem, deep delved, forlorn, deceiving elf. Understanding the poem 1. How does the nightingale's song plunge the poet into a state of ecstasy. 2. What are the unpleasant aspects of human condition that the poet wants to escape from? 3. What quality of beauty and love does the poem highlight? 4. How does the poet bring out the immortality of the bird? 5. How is the poet tossed back from ecstasy into despair? 6. How does the poem bring out the elusive nature of happiness in human existence? Try this out. 1. The poet has juxtaposed sets of opposites like numbness pains, waking dream. How does this contribute to the poetic effect? What is the figure of speech called? List the such pairs from poems that you have read. 2. The poet has evoked the image of wine. Why has this image been chosen? 3. The senses of sound, sight and taste are evoked in the poem. Locate instances of these. Page 139 4. The poet addresses the nightingale and talks to the bird throughout the poem. What is this kind of poem called? 5. Make a list of all adjectives in the poem along with the nouns they describe. List the phrases that impressed you most in the poem. 6. Find out the other odes written by Keats and read them. 7. Find out the odes written by Shelley and read them. Suggested reading 1. The Complete Version of Ode to a Nightingale by John Keats 2. Ode to the West Wind by P.B. Shelley 